Um, yeah, so uh, I was just going to go through a few things that I've been doing with Blackboard. I've been kind of adding more and more as I go along. And um, um, a couple of these are actually programmed outside of Blackboard, but that um, the students can access through Blackboard. Uh, I teach, just as background, I teach Physics 13. Uh, this term, we're act we've actually split it into two sections, but between the two sections, there are 100 students. And typically, it's been taught in one section. So this, this is really kind of stuff I've been doing to try and help managing a large class easier, uh, mostly. Um, so you know we have our standard uh, Blackboard. But one of the things I started doing about a year ago was um, this appointments page. I just found that I was spending so much time in email going back and forth with students. Are you free at 3 o'clock? No, I can't do 3. How about 2? And, and it was just driving me crazy. And, and somebody suggested um, this. And so I put a link to it. This is a separate subscription that I have to this. And I'm sure there are others out here. Um, but I put a link on it for the students. And uh, let's see if I can scroll down here a little bit. Um, basically, it, it shows them uh, they pick a day, and they say they want to schedule an appointment. And then they you know, click here and, and put in the information. This sends me an email telling me a student has made an appointment. It sends the student an email reminding them. They can also get on here and cancel the appointment. So basically, I can go through and schedule. Oh, I mean, this is for students who can't make my office hours, for example. And I can schedule any free blocks of time that I want. They make an appointment, and then I don't necessarily have to sit in my office waiting for nobody to show up. And I can. What um, is This is it's called um, shoot. When I'm going to forget, it's called Flash Appointments. And somebody in the Thayer School was using it, and I heard through somebody else that somebody was using it, and um, and I've been using it for about a year. I think it's I don't even know how much it's called, like ten bucks a month or something like that, um, is, which has been well worth it to me. Uh, so the other thing I've started doing is. Um, I have a Google cal calendar, so I just do a regular uh, Google calendar. And um, you can make your Google calendars. I use this for all my calendar stuff now, because I can access it anywhere uh, on the web. It's not, it's not on my computer. But then you can make a, a calendar public. And so uh, I can give my TAs access to modify this calendar. And I can then the students can access it too. So, so this is you know, our P13 calendar. This shows them there's a monthly view and a weekly view. So if we go to this week. Um, so these are the two different sections. I can actually put information in here. Also, if they click on it, they get a description that says, you know, make sure to do your pre-lab this week, and this is where the lab room is. And for the large class, especially with freshmen, I find that they, you know, especially the first week or two, they're pretty clueless. Where do I turn in my homework? Where do I do this? This gives them a resource so they can go to, and they don't have to email me necessarily. <coughs> Blackboard is not very visual, and the calendar is the most visual tool. This is. Yeah, you know, and, and I know Blackboard has its own calendar <coughs> yeah, feature, and I've I never know. used it, so it may it's just like this a bit. But I think, yeah, you know, but I think that it's why it struck me when somebody said that you know, Blackboard has very little. Google yeah, I think that's right, yeah. and you know, this I just happen to use Google for my own calendar, so I can do it all in one place. Um, can you have different view? I mean, can you have like your calendar for students and not? show your lunch date? Yes, you know. so if I was logged into my Google Calendar, right. you can basically make different calendars. So this is one that I've made public, and they can only see this one. And, I, and I want, I've put the link on the Blackboard. Now, I can't access the rest of my calendars from within Blackboard. I would have to go <coughs> Google into that. But in your Google Calendar, can you have things? Could you make a view of your own schedule and include it, this life and your other life? Or can you hide? I don't know. Oh, That's goodness. a good question. Could you, you should be able to hide parts of it. So that only uh, so you I would be able to access it, but they couldn't. Yeah, so there'd be one yeah. layer that's your that's your academic life, and then you might have another layer that is includes your lunch dates and yes. you know, yeah, yeah. assignments. So I would be sort of logged in as myself in this view, and I only I would be able to see my personal calendar, that's but right. the students would still only be able to so see each item. Yeah. Them and right. likewise, with your schedule appointment, I presume you can block off areas of time when students right. can make appointments. That's right. So the way it's it's set up, there's a there's a chart that um, you basically do your regular hours. So Thursdays are my research days, so I block off the entire day of Thursday and don't allow myself to be you know have appointments. But then you can also go in and make exceptions. So you know this today I'm here, and so normally I would be available at 1:30, but I'm not today. And you can go through and block out those. They have to. I've set it up so they have to make an appointment a full day in advance. Um, you know, you just have to keep on top of it and make sure that you're on top of your schedule. Otherwise, they'll make appointments before you've planned your next week. And but that doesn't happen too much. And, and I, this so far this term, no one's been using it. But uh, after the first exam, I, I've had students use it quite a lot. Actually, and they seem to be pretty comfortable with it. Um, so um, uh, so I also added a course fact. Again, I was 
getting pretty annoyed with answering the same question a thousand times. I don't know how much they use this, and I do have it set to track views. It'll be interesting to see how much they actually access this. But you know, it's the standard, just a place where they can go to ask frequently asked questions. And, and then if someone asks me something I think the rest of the class might want to know, I can stick it up here. Um, and then the rest of the, the stuff is, you know, you're pretty standard. I post all my lecture notes here. Um, and so I put PowerPoints that I use in class and my lecture notes up for the students. This is actually nice for me because when I go to the classroom, which has this stuff set it up in it, I can just go and download the PowerPoint from the computer in the classroom. I don't need to bring a memory stick down. I just put it up on Blackboard first, go to the classroom and download it right there and run it from the computer. So it's been actually convenient for me. Um, the, uh, and then, you know, we post all our homeworks and everything, of course. Um, the other and the other thing I guess I wanted to show was uh, two more things. One is um, video casts. We actually record all of, uh, we videotape all of the lectures for the introductory physics and astronomy, or if, if the faculty member wants them to be taped. Um, and I, you know, I think a lot of people, there's a lot of disagreement about whether or not we should be filming classes and you know, different people have different viewpoints about it. I've been finding it's, it's been really useful. Students. I think some people are worried that you know, people won't come to class for one thing. And my argument is, well, they got to spend the hour right. watching the video anyway. Yeah. So, right. and, um, and I find students more often will, um, they'll actually go back and rewatch the video and stop and pause it and go back to a place where they were, they were lost. I've also heard people concerned about that the videos were going to get out into the, the, the greater will. world. Okay. I don't they, care, they, but. <laughs> For Harvard and for Stanford, those have become sources of pride. And, you know, people yeah. Have made them that way. And um, I don't think Dartmouth has really an established policy on this. I mean, it's sort of, a, I guess it's potentially an intellectual property thing, or students are paying this much for this education. You know, should we be making it? I mean, I think some people feel we shouldn't be making it available. I personally don't think so, and a lot of schools are going that way. But I don't know if that's been discussed at Dartmouth as a, you know, campus-wide policy or not. And if, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know Depending if on the uh, <laughs> discipline, too, I know that some religion and philosophy professors have found that recording their lectures has led to an increased level of discussion because students aren't worried about taking notes yep. during the class hour. They can go back and review it later audibly. Yeah, yes. I've, I've, I've done it and posted it. It's useful. And your classwork is yours to do what you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I so use it, but I know that within our department, we've definitely had discussions about it. within and, your department. And, and, of course, you know, students have football games on Fridays or whatever. I mean, students that may have to miss class for some reason, this gives them an ability to go back and actually watch the lecture. Are you, because um, uh, one of the struggles we've had is, are you, sta is somebody standing at the back and recording it? Yep. So, the quality then of watching. It's actually pretty good because we actually now have it set up so that the microphone goes directly okay. into the camera, and so the sound is much better than it was originally. But do you, and then do you have a slide um, that they can also catch? I don't know if I want to do this or not. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what the quality looks like. We've uh, had, you know, I don't know if it's show up. Professor way at the front of the room, and so we've been playing with different things. So that yeah, and of course you do need the person to you need a person to be there filming and following the person. Um, I don't know if it's going to play. If it's I mean, we ended up having just slow. slides accessible so that they could hear it and watch me at the slides they could see because they otherwise are too far away. We, we have a setup there where you can see the talking head in a little part of the screen yes. and then most of the screen is the slide yes. and you hear the sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know that for some of the classes, I know it's really slow. Um, yeah, I think it's a wireless connection. So. Okay, so it's probably not going to come out. Um, I know that Jan Largent, who has kind of one that's still really got this going in the physics department. And for my astronomy, where I use a lot of PowerPoint to show pictures, he would actually go and back and edit the films and put the PowerPoint slides in there so it would show up. I mean, it's a huge time sink, though, and you need to have somebody that, I mean, I'm not going to spend the time doing that. What, what I've done is much less technologically advanced, but much more efficient, which is that I bought a little thing for my iPod, so I just record my lectures and then put up my PowerPoint. And if you, okay. you know, if you. They can they can do it, and if you're good about the cues, you can know, here's a map of the Middle East. <laughs> and, <they're laughs> and, and that's an efficient way of doing it and not having to have somebody coming to film you. And yeah, yeah. Well, and the time saved is that you have it to keep. I mean, I think that exactly. part of these, I feel like I'm going to start next year in a very different place. 
And this is the this also this is the third time I'm teaching this class, and I've used my own videos a lot to go back and say, what, you know, I mean, we've got notes obviously, but I it's been really useful for me to even see how many times I say um or what, you know, but to see oh that that worked or that didn't work, and remind myself what I did, and um, and then also watching Jim LaBelle's lectures because he's taught the class for 15 years, and it was really helpful for me to watch his lectures to get a kind of sense of things. So um, not just useful for students. So the very last thing I wanted to show was uh, um, this is the grade book. And the other thing I've been doing for the last two years, this is based on the stuff that Eric Mazur does. He um, teaches at Harvard in these big, uh, big survey physics classes. And he uh, gives reading quizzes to his students the night before and uses an electronic uh, medium. So I've been doing that. And um, what the, the, this is a, so this is the quiz for, you know, so these are the ones I hadn't read, um, but oh, look, some of my students did some quizzes for Friday. So uh, let me go back. Does everybody know how to add tests in Blackboard? So I just add this as a test, and then the students complete it. I can set the time that it disappears, and so they have to do it by 10 p.m. the night before lecture, so I have time to read them. And I can go through and click on, e I have to click on each student um, to go and modify their, their scores, because I give some multiple choice and some free response. And why didn't that work? Um, let's do this view. Um, so I can look at the student, and you know, he he got the first one right. And uh, sometimes I ask him for free response. And the, the thing I got from Eric Mazur was, um, and it's really slow, um, was the very last question he asks is, "What did you find confusing about the reading, or what did, or if you didn't find anything confusing, what did you find interesting?" And uh, trust. Hopefully that was okay to trust. Um, so, so here's a student, you know, who, whose question was this, and this is great. I mean, the book says astronauts are always in free fall, and that's why they appear weightless. But I was always led to believe there's no gravity. I mean, so this is a like typical misconception that people have about astronauts in space. And I would never have known that this student had this misconception without these reading quizzes. And what I do is I, um, I'll just copy and paste his response into my Gmail, and if I've if I've written him before, I, it even like completes his email address for me. I start taping in his name, and I actually will respond to the students over email. If it's a question that I see appearing a lot of times by a lot of students or something I think I should address in class, then I'll, I'll pay a lot of attention to that class. So I, I've taken my existing lecture notes and then started emphasizing the things that show up in these reading quizzes, saying, you know, the students, you should read the book. You have to read the book, and I'm going to address the things that you're having problems with. Um, and this is just for a big class where you have you just don't have the interaction with students. This has really made me feel like I actually know what they're, what they're getting um, and what they're not so getting. The idea that they're walking in, having already read it and done homework, you're starting from a completely different place. Yep, they, it forces them to read, and I even get yeah. that on do midterm evaluations. I use this actually to do surveys, like a midterm evaluation, and one of the things I get is that they actually, despite them complaining about reading quizzes being due at 10 p.m. because they have frat meetings or something, uh, they they. Uh, actually say that it helps them keep up on the reading and um, that was sort of my intention when I started doing the reading quizzes but what I didn't realize was how well it was going to actually increase the interaction and I find that I get a lot fewer emails from students with random physics questions because they have a resource they have a place where they can ask those which means I can sit down and do it all at once rather than having it mixed in with all of my other emails and missing a student's email or something um, so this has been a really nice so I, I think it's just an example of the tools in Blackboard that you can that you can actually modify to do what you want to do. Can I? Sorry, yeah. a, you, you seem wedded to Google and you still yeah. use Gmail. It's a new I'm, thing. I'm wedded to. Do you, do you use that instead of your Blitz account? I, I well, I have a Blitz account, but I have it all forwarded to Gmail. Um, I started doing that in January, and uh, I just think it's a much easier program to 90 use. Ninety percent of our students do the same. Of our class of students, we were shocked yeah. to find out that almost all of our students. Are you having it forward to it from Blitz to, to Gmail? And can you can you say why it's easier? Uh, the um, they have less. Room. Well, so so Web Blitz, you can access access your mail from anywhere, which is you can also do with Gmail. Um, I you know it's the labeling, the way the labeling is done. You can you basically put these colored, you can make them colored tabs on categories. So you know how you normally would have mail folders. And it, Gmail doesn't, they're not quite like folders. They're actually little labels that'll appear next to the message. You can filter your email really easily. Um, the spam filter, I found, is a lot better than the one that was on uh, Blitz. I mean, even if I set that one really high, I was finding I was getting tons and tons of spam. When I went to Gmail, 
I, it's been reduced. It puts it all in a spam folder, and occasionally I get a message that I want in there. I have to keep up on it. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I found it really, really easy. It, it completes when you start typing in a, the address of somebody, <coughs> like your, one of your students, it, it gives you a list of choices. So it's just, it's for, for these reading quizzes, when I'm doing like 80 of them in one night, I mean, it's, it's, it's much, much, much faster. But it also connects there as Google Docs now, where you can all be working on a document together. I mean, when you were talking about writing, we may have documents that every one of my, we're all writing it together, mm -hmm. um, so that we're doing a kind of wiki uh, app, application. There are a bunch of applications that become possible, and well, the students chose to make the discussion board on uh, Google this time. Mm -hmm. um, and their, their discussion about that, why that was. But, you know, I don't know Blitz because I always use Gmail, so I can't compare except I have a bunch of people tell me it's not. Well, you use Thunderbird, but, but it's a Blitz account. I mean, it's a Dartmouth account. Okay. Never well, mind. just so you're aware, you, you can run your Blitzmail account through e other email clients, such as Apple Mail or Microsoft Outlook. You can get your Blitzmail just as if it was. No, it I has use, all the same right, so I use Thunderbird. Thunderbird yeah. So. <coughs> So that's the same. But I've heard, I've heard, and I was just curious as to why you. I, I don't know if it's the interface or what, but I've just found it to be a lot more convenient to me. Are you worried about intellectual property at all? The fact that that's out there with the largest search engine in the world. Yeah, I mean, I've thought data. about that. I guess I, I'm yeah. not worried about any of my particular things. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really worried about. It. I, I, but I can understand why. And you know, it's got the chat feature, right? And I mean, somebody could be monitoring all of your chats and everything. I think. I think if you're aware that that could be going on, then maybe you're more careful. But um, yeah, I mean, Google's going to rule the world, right? So, but I, I, I think it's just a really useful program to use. That's why I use it. Um, okay. So I think that's all I, I want to show. Thanks a lot, Robin. Sure.